Andrea Koppel, host of the Time for Coffee podcast, where you get firsthand career advice into the jobs and industries that interest you the most. And before we start today's show, I have a quick favor to ask you. If you haven't already, I'd be incredibly grateful if you give us a rating and a review on iTunes. And if you're like me, you need to do it now because you'll forget later and because it's the best way to help others who may be in search of career advice to find this free resource. So press pause if you haven't done it and do it right now. I'll wait. Thanks so much and enjoy today's show. Hey there, Java Junkies. Welcome to another K-Cup mini episode of Time for Coffee. By the way, K-Cups come in three sizes, single, double, and triple shots, or roughly one minute, five minutes, or ten minutes in length. So if you don't have time to throw back an entire caffeinated career conversation, these K-Cup mini episodes of T4C can give you a quick caffeinated fix, whether you're on the go or you only have a few minutes to binge. So grab your mug and take a chug, because it's time for a caffeinated career double shot K-Cup with my guest, Seth Godin. You've already mentioned the fact that you (laughs) have done it wrong and screwed up over the years and whatnot. And one of the questions that I try to ask all my guests, Seth, is to share a time in their professional life when they really screwed up. (laughs) Maybe when they failed, because it's super easy for someone who's 22 to look at a Seth Godin who is quite a bit older than 22 at this point and say, I bet that guy never really dropped the ball. Have you? So there's two kinds of uh, screw ups. The biggest ones are the uh, errors of omission. The people I didn't give the benefit of the doubt to, the people I didn't treat fairly, the opportunities I failed to pursue, the chances I had to build something or invest in something. And I said, I don't get it. And those have cost me billions of dollars and broken my heart. Billions of dollars and broken my heart. But those aren't the ones you're asking about. You know, the early in my career, uh, the, the software that I was building, we didn't want to shrink wrap it. And so I ordered 10,000 little tiny Velcro dots that would connect and keep them shut. Uh, but I failed to test whether the Velcro dots would stick to the packaging or not, and they didn't. And so all these senior people in the company are busy putting the packages together to meet our deadline and none of the Velcro dots are sticking. But you survived that. A bigger one is, you may have heard of a company called AOL. AOL used to be our biggest customer. Uh, At the time I had 50 employees and we were running a series of online promotions for AOL. We invented email marketing. And there was also uh, a company called Carter Wallace, which made a deodorant called Arid Extra Dry. They were another one of our customers. And one morning, all the AOL customers opened their email and discovered that they're getting emails about Arid Extra Dry deodorant. And that's a really big problem. And so uh, the client at AOL calls up and their stock price was very fast moving and she was very uh, stressed. And she yelled at us about the fact that we had screwed up. I said, no problem, we got to fix it. And the next week, the emails went out and it was wrong again. And Audrey called me up, screaming even louder. And I said, you're absolutely right, Audrey. This is inexcusable. I'm going to get on a plane. I'm going to fly to Vienna, Virginia, where you're located. I'm going to apologize to you face-to-face so you know how serious we're taking this. And it will never happen again. And Audrey said, if you set foot on this campus, I will have you arrested. And so our team completely scrambled. We hired somebody we couldn't afford. We rebuilt all of our systems. And the next week, I get into the office at 5 a.m. because there's no Wi-Fi at home. It hadn't been invented yet. I get in the office at 5 a.m. and I open my AOL account and there's an email from Arid Extra Dry. And I call up Dan, my head of tech. He's in Boston. And if Dan hadn't been in the basement office, he would have jumped out the window. doesn't work if you're in the basement. It turns out that our system had worked and only three people had gotten the incorrect email. But what 
you learn from situations like this is you can't be cavalier. You have to be serious. There are consequences to your actions. You should start small and work your way up. But what you also learn is if you want perfect, you're not in the right line of work, no matter what line of work you're in. There is no perfect. Thanks for tuning in to this K-Cup mini episode of Time for Coffee. If you want to listen to our entire caffeinated career conversation, please check out the show notes for this episode. Thanks so much for listening to this latest episode of t for c And if you're interested in learning more about my coaching services for confused college students and recent grads, feel free to check out the Time for Coffee website under the coaching tab at time the number four coffee.org or text me at 202 236 5712. That's 202 236 5712.